Hi, today I'm going to look at the basic filtering capabilities of Process Monitor or Procmon. So let's get straight to it and get Procmon started. Now, I've started it and uh, I've immediately been uh, presented with this filter dialog box. If you were running the default filter set, you wouldn't get this dialog box and Procmon would start immediately. But because I've added some filter terms, um, I'm presented with this box. Now I can go back to the default set by clicking on Reset here. So let's just click Reset. Now the thing to notice here is that by default Procmon is excluding certain events. So for example it's excluding any events that relate to its own process. It's uh, to Procmon and to Process Explore and to Auto Runs. All of these things are excluded and we can keep going down the list and we can see there are a fair number of things that are excluded by default. These mostly are not of great use to us except for the system process. There are occasions when we want to see uh, system process activity. But anyway, we'll go with the default set. So now I click on OK and we can clearly see that uh, process monitor has started. We've got this scrolling window. I'm going to stop the scrolling actually because uh, I'm doing this via a terminal services session. Down here in the status line in the bottom of the window we can see that we are, be we are being presented with 8,000 or 9,000 events out of 157,000. So this is where the default filter set is dropping obviously quite a high number of events right now and uh, they're not being dropped during capture they're just being dropped for display purposes so we're capturing all the events but we're only displaying a subset and this is behaving much like Wireshark behaves when you're using a, a display filter so let me briefly stop this and what I'm going to do, I'm going to erase all these entries and now I'm going to add this particular filter option drop filtered events and we'll see the effect that has so let's just make sure that's been set, which it has okay now we restart the Procmon trace and now you see down here it's saying we're showing all of the events and so the reason is because now with the drop filtered events setting that's behaving like a, a Wireshark capture filter and so now we're just being presented with everything that's being captured and if we were to save this file we would only be saving the uh, these particular entries there is one thing here I've, I've noticed this happening sometimes these get slightly out of step and I'm not quite sure why but I haven't found any problem with uh, important events being missing from the trace so we shouldn't worry too much about that so let's make this a bit more interesting by starting Wireshark and I'm going to actually start uh, a capture in Wireshark just a short capture and let's stop that immediately and I'll shut that down and now let's stop our process monitor trace now up here you see that we have a number of columns displayed and uh, you can select more columns by default um, you don't get this column that's called TID which is thread ID and you don't get this duration value so uh, for the set that I run I, I add these in. Duration tells you how long a partic particular operation took. That one looks quite worrying because that's uh, taken 56 seconds to complete but I'm, I'm not going to go off and explore that right now. Um, but you can see how you can uh, add columns. You add columns by right clicking in the column bar and then doing select column and here are all the columns that you can add it's pretty much true that whatever you can add as a column you can use as a filter term 
So that's a good indication of all the different filter terms that you can use. And they'll appear under um, in, in the various drop downs in the filter dialog box, which I'll show you in a second. OK, so let's have a look at Wireshark and dump cap activity. So I click on the filter button here, which is this funnel. Here are all the different criteria we can use for the filter, and you can see many of these match the columns that we looked at earlier. The particular criteria I'm going to use is process name, which is this one. And this is quite neat because it pre-populates this list with all the processes that it's that Pro, uh, Process Monitor has detected within the trace. So if I come down here, I'll find Wireshark just there. And I add that. By default, it adds as an include, which means that I'm going to select any events that are related to the Wireshark process. And now I'm going to add dump cap. But this time I could select it. It's, it will be in the list here somewhere. Just there. But rather than do that, I can just type in dumpcap.exe. And I can add that. Now when you add two criteria from the same column, so Wireshark and dump cap, both from the process name column, they're added in an OR relationship. So I will see entries for Wireshark or dump cap. So let's apply that. There are the Wireshark entries. Lots of them. Let's try and scroll down a bit further and see if we can find some dump cap activity. There we go. My scrolling will stop. <laughs> OK, so here we see dump cap. So that's one way we can filter by process name. As I said, we can filter by any of these criteria. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a simple filter that says that I want to see an operation called create file, which will select any file operations that either create a new file or open an existing file. But remembering that it's just going to be for Wireshark and Dumpcap. So in this case, if I add a criteria from another column, I get an AND relationship. So I get Wireshark or Dumpcap and create file. So let's add that in. And now you can see all of these operations. So we'll stop there and in the next blog I'll do a bit more on filtering.